I'm Jonathan Myberg. I'm Emily Cross. From Loma. And where are you from? Where are we from? Well, that's a long story, I guess. Well, we live in a van now. <laughs> but um, I live in New York, and Emily lives in I live Austin, in Austin right now. Mm -hmm. When did you start making music? Well, actually, your answer to that's kind of interesting. Kind of. I started making music in college, um, the last year of college. I went for visual art, and then I like took this minimalism class, minimalist music class, and we had one of our assignments was to make like a long minimalist composition or do a. Um, PowerPoint presentation, and so I, and I was like, I'll make the um, recording, and my friend Theo was an engineer, so I, I solicited him for help, and I ended up making this, like, 30-minute long um, uh, accordion voice wine glasses composition, and I had so much fun, and it was, like, drawing to me, like, putting all of the pieces together, and it was very visual. Um, and then after that, I got very interested in doing that, and then I started singing a little bit after that and making more, like, poppier songs, I guess. So you just kind of fell into the whole singing? Yeah. I mean, I've always sung, like, sung in my, you know, for fun, but, and I played clarinet in the band in middle school, but other than that. Which we forced you into doing on the record. Yeah, well, you didn't have to force me. <laughs> I like she can she can make a clarinet sound like she's bending a steel girder in half. Yeah, it's, really it's not hard with a clarinet actually. Uh, so the Emily's band Cross Record was um, I brought them on tour with my band Shearwater back in 2016, and so got to know Emily and Dan also who was playing with her at the time that way. And after you know about midway through the tour, I just liked them so much with personally and musically that I was like, you know, we should just form a band together. And so that's what happened. We got together in Dripping Springs, Texas and made an album and we kept, it was just very surprising to all of us, I think. It was, sounded unlike either of our two bands and we really loved what was happening. And so we kind of, um, it, we just trusted in it, I guess. And at the end of it, we had the lower record, which for me, it's like one of my favorite records I've ever worked on, maybe especially because I didn't have to do the singing. <laughs> you did some singing. I did some singing. So I read there was a quite special house where you created the music. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. <laughs> well, when uh, Dan and I moved down from Chicago to Dripping Springs, that was the house that we found, and it's like on 18 acres. And it's this rammed earth house, which is basically like a house of rock. And the walls are like this thick, um, just solid rock, like compressed. Um, yeah, it's like they took a big machine and smashed a bunch of, down. of earth together and it turned it into stones. Anyway, yeah, Dan still lives there, so, and my dogs are there, and so we recorded, that's the house we recorded. And next door is like a bird sanctuary, so um, Jonathan, being a bird lover, Drew much just inspiration. It's, yeah, it, it was an amazing place, and I went there and I thought, oh, I can see why they like making music out here because it's just such a beautifully resonant room to to play in. And then the moment you stepped outside, there were all these incredible sounds which we tried to put into the record. Uh, I just I got very inspired by the house itself, sort of, and so you can hear that there's a over the hill there was a, an aviary with parrots in it, and every morning you'd wake up to all these parrots screaming over mm -hmm. the hill and then some roosters on the other side, and sometimes the parrots would imitate the roosters. I got a big kick Yeah, it's nice. What are some things that are important to you that you like to address through your music? Feelings. <laughs> Feelings. Combinations of lightness and darkness. Yeah. Um, I think also, especially for this record, like creating a, spa a space to live in, mm -hmm. like creating a space to like sink into and Yeah, that you can sort of, like, of crawl inside of it mm -hmm. and live in there. Yeah. Are my favorite records are always like that. They have this real yeah. thick sense of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And space. Mm -hmm. Who did you listen to growing up? Gosh. 
I remember being a little kid and playing along to E. Powers Biggs plays Bach on the pipe organ, but not on the piano or the organ. I was playing along with pots and pans. So I was like drumming along with Bach, and I kept breaking all these wooden spoons. To me. That was like the first sort of tactile musical experience that I remember. What about you? Uh, well, I just we were actually just talking about Karla Bonoff uh, yeah. yesterday, but uh, you know. My mom, my parents, my mom was really into like Karl Lobanoff and Karen Carpenter and um, Fleetwood Mac and, and my dad was really into classical music so I just l listened to what they listened to. But then when I got into my teenage years all I listened to was hip hop and rap. So, um, and then I went through like an emo phase. <laughs> but, so it kind of varied. Like, who would you most like to collaborate with and why? Rihanna. Huh? Yeah, Simone, yeah. Um. Oh, I didn't say why. Rihanna, because uh, she's. I just love her. And I love her voice, I guess. And I think it'd be really fun. I'd love to work with Phil Elvrum. It's just a, it's oh, a can I change mine to Phil Elvrum? Well, we can both think. Okay, we both want to work I, with Phil. I think I don't know what I would add. You know, I think yeah, I'd love just true. running around watching him do stuff. He's a, he's a national treasure. Yeah, he, is. But, like, he really does a beautiful job of working with atmospheres. And, yeah. Um, it's never in a way that feels forced or phony. It just seems like his records just kind of grew up out of the ground. Mm -hmm. That's true. Are you still active in your other bands? And what do you expect next for Loma? I mean, I'd like to make another Shearwater record one day, but I'm really enjoying this. I mean, I'd make another Loma record starting tomorrow if I could. I don't know if you would. Yeah, sure. I, I, I hope we get to make another album. I'm gonna... Tour some more. Yeah, I think we probably will. This, this band doesn't feel exhausted to me at all. Mm. And the touring band, who's not in here right now, but they're unloading the gear and we're packing up our gear in the other room. Um, Dan Dzinski's playing drums and keys and samples. Emily Lee's playing keyboards. Matt Schussler's playing bass and just playing music with those people. Mm. It's just it's a pleasure. It's dreamy. Yeah, mm -hmm. they all listen and play so beautifully. And I'm gonna write a cross record record, probably Soon. after this tour, but I don't know. I don't know what's happening with it. There's no pressure, but I'm, I am gonna write it. Soon. What are your interests and passions outside of music? <laughs> tea. Tea. For me, it's tea, and I do uh, death work. So I'm a death doula. I help people um, transition from life to death. So that's a very big world and passion of mine. And art. I like to draw and paint. On the, on, on the shows, Emily's been actually drawing a big picture during the show. Uh, there's an e we have an easel up at the shows, and she, she draws, paints on it, um, which seems to me like an unbelievably courageous thing to do. Like, I, can't, I, would, I just get scared to death even thinking about it. But they and they, they don't. It's not just that you do it; it's that they look really good when you're done. The last one wasn't that good. It was great. But the the uh, for me. I'm trying to finish this book right now, which because being in a rock tour isn't helping me finish the book, but it's almost done. Um, that I've been working on for about years and years about a strange group of South American birds called caracaras, which are sort of like the South American equivalent of crows and ravens. They're really smart and funny and weird social animals. Um, and it's a book of sort of travels and adventures in, with them and their world. Um, so some of your videos are very kind of creative and interesting. Do you conceive of those? Yes. Yeah, Emily's our, Emily's our <laughs> visual, she's in charge of the visual aspect of the band. I mean, I've had friends to help with all of them, except for Dark Oscillations and uh, White Glass. And White Glass. But, yeah, we just, I just kind of spearheaded that part of that aspect of the band. I like doing videos, but it's so stressful. Yeah. Um, that I was, I was like, here, Emily, <laughs> you do this. <laughs> and I really like to control everything in, in the visual. So you have to do. So it was 
it felt good to me. To yeah, they look like cool art installation Thank you. pieces. Thanks. So what are your favorite books, film, and music right now? Jeez. I'm really into George Saunders right now. I just finished some of his books, but he's really great. I just kind of discovered him. How about you? Um, well, for film and music, I just discovered this little mini documentary called Devil's Teeth. Um, it's just like 10 minutes long about a guy who was a sea urchin diver off the Farallon Islands, San Francisco. Um, but I've watched that probably 20 times. I don't know what it is about it, but there's something incredibly special about this little documentary. So I recommend that. You can just find it online. Devil's Teeth. Devil's Teeth. And uh, for books, uh, Dennis Johnson, Train Dreams is a favorite. Music. Yeah, that soundtrack for Phantom Thread sure was great. Just thinking about that again. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, it's, it's hard to it's hard to want to consume a lot of music while you're making it. I think I kind of go through phases where I'm listening and then phases where I'm making it. But but both together is sometimes kind of hard. To be honest, I don't listen to that much music in my. I just don't make time for it enough, or maybe not enough, I just don't make time for it very often. I think there are phases of life where you do more often than, I, mean, I just, I don't like to listen to music in the background usually. I want to like really that's, listen to it or I don't want to listen to it. That's why I have trouble, because I don't just put it on. Yeah. I'll put on like a podcast instead, and I can do stuff while I'm listening to a podcast. But. 